I own a musket for home defense, since that's what the Founding Fathers intended. Four ruffians break into my home. What the devil? I say as I grab my powder wig and flintlock rifle. Blow a golf ball size hole through the first man. He's dead on the spot. Draw my pistol on the second man. Miss him entirely because it's smooth bore and nail the neighbor's pig. After resort to the cannon mounted at the top of my stairs, loaded with grape shot. Tell the whole lads! The grape shot shreds two men in the blast. The sound and extra shrapnel set off iron golems. Grab Diamond Sword and charge, the last terrified Rapscallion. He bleeds out, waiting for the police to arrive, since disintegration wounds are impossible to stitch up, just as the Founding Fathers intended. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Lorthorn, and welcome to How To Old Gun Mod by Zach2039. This is a mod for 1.18.2 Java Edition using Forge as the base mod engine, and it does run on older and newer versions of Minecraft, the latest being 1.19. whatever that rubbish is. And well, this is a mod all about guns. Old guns, in particular. Now, I must admit that this mod is a little work in progress. My goodness, is it work in progress, actually. But despite that, it is very nicely polished and worthwhile showing off, especially because it is complicated. To begin with, we need a book. Like most mods, they have their own guidebook added in. The guidebooks do require, however, that you get Pacholi, or however you say that mod. So, yes, get that, and you'll be good to go. Anyways, the guidebook is made like most books, except more exciting, because there is gunpowder involved. So, to make it, you just need the leather, the paper, and the gunpowder, and you get the old gun's companion. Now, this has the guide to how to do the whole mod, except it's missing about 20% of the information, and it's really hard to follow. But luckily, you don't need to follow it, as you can follow me, and I will explain most things. So tally-ho, let us go and explore the wonderful world of old modded guns, or old gun mod. The first thing that you actually want to make, excluding that guidebook, is in fact the gunsmith's bench. This wonderful little piece of crafting is your new crafting table, which is where you'll be doing all your crafty recipes in. Forget the old boring crafting table, for you have a new one. This one, with the little clamps and stuff on it. Once you have that made, you can start crafting things in it. The first thing we are going to craft in it, this medium wooden handle, which is made like so. Two in a line and a dot like that. You can attempt to make such a thing in the normal crafting table, however, it will not work. After the medium handle is made, we will want to make also in the gunsmithing bench the small iron barrel. And after that, in the gunsmithing bench, we will want to make iron gear set. With this new gear in hand, you will want to take a lever and a tripwire hook and throw that mess together to get yourself oh, oh, an iron trigger assembly. And then you will take this iron trigger assembly and you'll make one of the most important parts of any firearm, the trigger mechanism. This being a wheel lock mechanism using iron trigger assembly, iron ingots, iron gears, flint, and well more iron gears. And when you have this thing, you can then go to your gun crafting table and with the other parts I told you to make, put them all together in a line like so, that slightly resembles a firearm, and boom, you will get your very first wheel lock pistol, which will do nothing but click. If it's loaded, it will do something. However, they take a little bit of work to load. So, let's get into the loading process. To load these weapons, you will need gunpowder and bullets, and they should make a sound like this when they're loaded properly. Now, to get to the load properly point, you have to make the bullets. The bullets of choice we are going to be making is the noble iron musket ball, which is made with iron nuggets and put together gives you an iron musket ball. Then to load the weapon, 
Simply all you have to do is take gunpowder, piece of ammunition, and put them all into your crafting inventory in a matter like so. Now, another way that you can know how to load them is you press R for recipe if you have not enough items, and then in normal crafting, it will show you this is how you create a loaded pistol for firing bullets with. Of course, you do not have a map lock pistol. You have a noble wheel lock pistol, the far more interesting pistol. And you may have noticed that when you press R on this wonderful piece of technology, you will find that it requires medium or high grade black powder, whereas you only have measly gunpowder. So with the example of loading this matlock just for posterity stake, put all there, you take out, you have the weapon ready, and boom, there you go. The matlock is a simple weapon to create requiring stone and matlock mechanisms. Simple enough to make, but not as interesting as the wheel lock in my opinion. Well, we'll have to go ashore off the old boat to figure out the creation process of the medium grade and high grade black powder. Now, medium grade black powder is actually a nightmare to create. It requires you first to make this gross stuff called Natir bedding, and we'll get to why it's gross in but a moment. But anyways, it requires clay, dirt, and wheat. Then you'll also want a shovel while processing this stuff. Now, you can put dripstone above it and it'll drip onto it and you'll see it will change from this wonderful brown substance to this sort of white gloopy gravelly substance. And like digging a dirt path with a shovel, you can dig it and you can get out of the mix nitrite solids. This is a rather slow process, however, but it can be sped up for instead of dripping slowly dripstone onto it, you can instead have your animals penned above it and then their uh, excrement, shall I say, will be loaded into the soil and you can extract it from the soil there in a process of which they've done for nigh on ages to get nitrate solids, which is, well, rather revolting, quite practical. Then we want to take this nitrite soil and put it into a brewing stand. We put it on the top of the brewing stand and we put water bottles into the bottom of the brewing stand. This process will extract the nitrates from the soil and put it into our bottles to give us liquid nitre. We then take our liquid nitre and we place it within a cauldron. It will slowly fill up the cauldron, given enough time, and provide there's a heat source under the cauldron, it will boil into nitre crystals. These can then be collected, and they're actually a rather abundant amount that you get out of the whole process. So once you have a few, it is not too bad. Then taking these crystals, we want to craft for ourselves yet another tool to process them with, the mortar and pestle. Now the mortar and pestle is made only with polished granite and a lever on top. And then this, after being crafted in the gunsmithing table, I know it is still required, can be taken and you can ground nether quartz with your mortar pestle and turn to sulfur. Now this also works with netheract. Either way, you will be getting the sulfur out of the process. Taking the sulfur and combining it with both your crystals and charcoal will produce medium grade black powder. We can now load our wheel lock pistol. And when it comes down to it, that wasn't too bad now, was it? Wheel lock pistol loaded, and bam! Whoa, be a tide, any ripe scallions that come sneaking up on us. If we happen to want an even higher grade of black powder to work with, then we needs be creating high quality black powder. And this is made through taking our medium grade black powder and turning it into a block of medium grade black powder. Then we want to stick this into a pool of water and that makes it into a block of wet medium grade black powder. Then we put it on top of some obsidian. We put a piston on top of that and we crush the thing. And that gives us wet high grade black powder cake. We take the wet high grade black powder cake, slap it down out in the sun, and that will now break down into high grade black powder cake for it is dry after being left out long enough. Then taking this dry substance, we can mix it with the mortar and pestle and get high grade black powder. 
And now we can load our weapon with a high grade black powder and it has a little bit more oomph to it now. Shabam! And some weapons such as the flint locks only work with high grade black powder. Now there are actually a load of different kinds of guns and these guns can all be crafted through the various different parts and bits and bobs found within the mod. However, to craft the, some of these more exotic guns, let's say the little flintlock duck foot derringer, will require the design notes to make them. S design notes specific, 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 specific to that weapon. And to find these, we have to go to places full of lost treasure such as boats. And within these sunken shipwrecks, we will find all our design mechanisms for the knock gun or the flintlock mechanism. If you ever happen to come across the knock gun recipe, really do hold on to that because they are amazing. But these minutia of new guns and gold guns alike do require reloading and it is rather tedious to reload through loading both in powder, I have to get the powder in, then I have to put the bullet in, then I have to put the gun in, it's just such a pain. But this whole process can be sped up through the advent of paper cartridges. How does one cartridge a paper? Well, first it requires honey, mmm, honeycomb, mixed with paper, it will give you wax paper. Then the wax paper, combined with a little bit of black powder, depending on the quality of shot you need, and combined with the type of bullet you need, small, medium, large, or other, can all be tied together with a nice little bit of string to give you a cartridge. And the paper cartridge can be loaded into the gun for faster loading. Now also, apparently, these can be breech loaded by modifying the gun. However, I have found after extensive looking, high in load, even though it happens to say in this very book, The Old Gun Companion, that you can breech load your weapons with a modifier in the future similar to a crossbow. I have not found it to be possible at all through any modifications, thus leading to the more whip-like nature work in progress of this mod. But the cartridge is still loaded into our wheel lock pistol, and bam, we can fire it, and it's a slightly faster process when it comes to loading. And oh my gosh, there are so many glorious guns in this mod, all various different shapes and sizes, very pretty, but they do get damaged over time. And when they are damaged, it may be high time to recycle them. So taking the hacksaw, which is crafted in the gunsmithing table with iron ingots end of sticks, you can put your old gun to the saw and turn it into gun parts. Then you can match those gun parts to a gun of the same type, such as this damaged matlock pistol, and it will repair using those gun parts. If you do not want to recycle your guns to repair them, you can instead craft using slime wool, stick, leather, logs, and a lever, the firearm repairing kit, which will repair your firearms within the gunsmithing bench as well. And the kit itself has a mount of durability that gets used up for the repair. Now, I did only cover iron parts, but there are actually many more parts than this iron part. There is the wooden gears and there is the gold gears, many different sets of gears. There's many different types, such as the flint lock, the wheel lock, and the mat lock. Now, there is also a fourth kind, which is called the cap lock. However, these types of guns that are made with a cap lock are only available in the 1.19 version of the mod and not available in the 1.18. And yes, there are many different types of barrels and things you can craft all of their own little recipes which require you to do some exploring and looking, but you can figure out your clever boys and girls who know what you're doing and when you have such things in your hands, well, nothing will stop you but solid armor plating. But even if there's solid armor plating, there are many bullets to attempt to bounce off it, such as buckshot, birdshot, small iron balls, medium iron balls, large iron balls, and very large iron balls. The cannon balls are made with a block of iron and ingots around it. And well, you need a cannon to fire the cannonball with. So let's talk about the cannons. Now there are only two artillery pieces within the mod so far. However, looking at the recipe list, you would happen to think there should be a lot more different options of cannons. Alas, there is only one cannon and 
the Congroove rocket stand available for our artillery pieces. They are more than enough for the Momad stands. The medium naval cannon is crafted as such. First, we need the explosive charge to fire it. Any sort of gunpowder will do. Mixed with paper will give you the medium charge. You can also make large charges using more gunpowder, and you can make small charges using less gunpowder. The medium will do just fine for us, as the large will overfire the cannon and make it explode, and the small is kind of small and pitiful. We need a barrel, of course, for our cannon, and for the medium naval gun, we need a large iron cannon barrel, requiring three blocks of iron and four iron ingots. Then we come to a bit of a sticky point. Bark strands. These are required to fire cannons. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out how to get them besides cheating. I have looked a lot throughout this mod, and I have not figured out. If you do happen to know how to make these things without cheating, put it down in the comments. Maybe in later editions they're a lot more simple, but it's not in the book. It's not in any of the recipes. I tried a bunch of things. It did not work. But you still need it, because it is required to make match cord. A match cord, as we all know, is what you put at the end of sticks to create a long match. The long match, very important. After the long match, we want to make, of course, one of my favorite things, a ramrod, which requires a little bit of wool from the ram and two sticks, and it will ram things as you please. Then, to proceed with this medium naval cannon, we need tiny wooden carriage wheels, the smallest you can get, requiring a button and sticks You'll need two of those. Then of course we need the cannon stand and that is made through wood, wood, and more wood. Specifically slabs, plank, and logs. And that is the medium cannon made like everything else in the gunsmith's bench. You take all of these things together and with their powers combined in a pattern like this, cannon on top, wheels to the side, housing in the bottom, you will get the medium naval cannon and you will have your charges and everything good to go besides knowing how to aim the damn thing. And to aim the damn thing, you'll need a compass with sticks to create the gunner's quadrant. And then from there, you put your cannon down. It can be adjusted by clicking on the very back part of it. It's rather hard to turn, but if you right click while not shifting, the cannon head will raise up. And if you right click while shifting, the cannon head will lower down. We will raise it to about the midpoint for this demonstration. Put down a sand block in front of it. We will gather up the very first part, which you need to load in, the medium powder charge. Loading in can be a rather aggravating process, for you have to right click on the cannon hole. However, it doesn't go in. It makes a little popping noise. So you can stand there and spam it, or as I have found, if you shift while holding down right click, it shoves the thing in. Then you take the ramrod, shift, hold down right click, and eventually it should stop making the noise and it's rammed in. The gunner's quadrant can let you know what point of the process you're in. Powder is rammed currently and max ammo is loaded. Then we take the cannonball and we also add it into the front of the cannon. And after a few bits of fiddling, it is now loaded as well. We Ramrod it in, and then we get our long match ready, and we take out the quadrant, and it'll show us right around where our cannonball will land. Now, if we want to hit the boat, we'll have to raise it up a little bit. It appears we're just kind of out of range here. I think this shot will be sufficient to powder the side of the ship. So, long match away! And, well, the cannon didn't break anything, but that is how you fire it, and pretty neat. There are, in fact, more kinds of shot, though, than just the simple noble cannonball. We also happen to have medium canister shot, medium iron grape shot, and medium explosive shells. All that can be fired at personnel. Each requiring its own little process, jig and dance of loading, which we happen to have a cannon up here set up against some dummies, which will show the whole thing for you in fine detail. So first, medium powder shot inside, ram it down, and canister shot inside. Ram it down, rammed in place, and cannon shows we're going to be shooting a little bit high. It should be good enough to fire as it stands. So we can fire that, as you saw, 
It hit basically everyone in front of it, leaving tons of little scattered ammunition all about. We can also load in some more powder charges, put in the grape shot, ramrod that in, and the recipes for these things is quite findable within the Just Enough Items menu so that you can make them for yourselves. So, no need to really explain them, but grape shot, boom. Far more focused, many impacts, lots of damage. And then finally, yes, medium powder, explosive shell, tally-ho, and a rather devastating explosion, which completely annihilated that dummy, dealing 43 damage, a very devastating hit. Hard to match, I think. If we want a little bit more oomph, as I said earlier, we can choose to load a large powder into the smaller cannon. It will make the cannon boom a lot more. And if we stood near it, we would have taken damage. So, well, more powerful shot is far more dangerous to stand near. And I just want to recommend overloading a cannon. Now, cannon is well and good for damage. However, there are quite a few guns, which I prefer over the cannon. Now, some of them do require a lot more loading than others, but each one is rather fun. To begin with, we have the blunderbuss. This gun fires a spread of bullets and does good enough damage against a single target. Now, if they wear armor, it's going to take a lot less damage, only 15. And the spread, you rather need them standing right next to each other to get away with any decent type of multi-shot off of that. The double flint lock, blunderblust, just happens to be loaded twice. Usually after you fire a gun, it expends some of the ammo. However, this one carries two cartridges, meaning that you can fire it twice in quick succession. The handheld mortar is unwieldy, as different guns have different weights to them, and its unwieldiness applies slowness to you. And this fires the explosive round. So we'll try the wheel lock hand mortar again. And hitting the target that time, you saw that it dealt 41 damage to the dummy where it hit, and a lot of damage to everything around it. Now, unfortunately, this weapon has fallen victim to it's actually not loadable, so you can only fire it out of creative mode, as it actually doesn't have any ammo within the menus, which is a bit of a shame, because it is a fun weapon. The pepper box is a gun that is loaded with just a small lead ball, and it's a short-range little pistol that still deals decent damage. Even against the armored opponent, 10 damage isn't that bad. Now, the Flintlock Duckfoot Derringer shoots a spread of bullets. And it hurts with those multiple small projectiles. But by far my favorite weapon is the Flintlock Knock Gun. Now, this thing is a beastly weapon. Based on the actual knock gun, they were rarely used because of how much kickback they had. They basically were pipe bombs. It deals 128 damage upon hitting target, and there's a close spread. It's a very devastating weapon. However, to reload it, it takes a lot of time. You have to put in quite a few bullets into its chamber, requiring five to be fully loaded. But then once fully loaded, it's ready to go again. And you can enchant these things, which is great. So you can give them unbreaking or punch, or piercing to your heart's content, even mending. And then, with that punch, it has a little bit more blam to it. It's not going to do all that much because it's not arrows, but still, piercing all that stuff is quite fun. And having a weapon that deals a hundred and something damage in a single shot is indeed very nice to have. Even against full netherite, that is 70 damage. These things are amazing. I love the knocked gun. Also, its boom is just so satisfying. It is such an amazing, amazing firearm. But to finish off this mod guide of old guns, we will go back to the more American founding father roots. And we shall proceed with fireworks, or rather, rockets. First, we want to make blasting powder out of charcoal, netherite, and sulfur in this smaller pattern. Then we do again, but we make it a little bigger, and that's how we get rocket powder. 
We get both of those and we mix it with iron and a stick. In this pattern, giving us the medium iron explosive rocket. Then we just need to take a wooden gear along with a wooden slab or two and two wooden planks and we get the Congreve rocket stand. And when we put these two things together, by placing it right there on that little hitbox, something magic happens. Four, when a long match is placed to that little block, it fires off the rocket and gloriously has a complete lack of aim, flying randomly off into the distance to explode upon your enemies. In glorious, chaotic fashion of complete inaccuracy, just as the American way would be. Ah yes, I do love firing rockets. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it make you feel patriotic? Don't you just go, oh yeah, USA, USA, when you see something like this. Admit it, if you're American, you feel a little something. Well, joke's on you, sucker, for this was a British weapon that they mostly used, and the Americans barely adopted it, being far more popular among British soldiers when fighting, you filthy yanks. Extremely expensive and kind of garbage weapon, and you fell right for my trap! Ha! That is still amazing and quite fun. Much as this weird little mod is. Amazing, quite fun, completely impractical, and probably not actually all that American, um, given that Minecraft is a Swedish game and all. But all that said, it is very good. I hope you enjoyed the how-to old gun mod. It is very confusing. I don't even know some of the answers, but the reloading, hopefully that's explained. How to load the cannon, that's explained, because I couldn't figure that out until quite a bit of research and, well, firing all those things, putting it all together using that gunsmithing table, that's very important, and understanding that some parts of this mod are just not completed yet. And with all that knowledge in your hand, matlock, flintlock, or whatever kind of lock you wish can be in your hand, and you can go kablam with it. So until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all then. Goodbye. Thank you.